Good evening everyone and thank you for coming back to Delve Chanel's 48 Swirl where we do reviews. The review we're going to be going over today is the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, shoot, what was it? Uh, season 12, episode 6. And I think it was something about a wig. <laughs> a wig, wig, wig. Oh shoot. Um, I didn't write it. Well, I think I did write it down but... Uh, let's see. It was where's there where there is a wig, there is a way. Okay, air today, December eighth, two thousand nineteen, Sunday, at uh, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time Zone. Okay, so that's again, um, season twelve, episode six. Okay, but I, child, I was mad throughout this whole doggone uh episode or yeah episode. This was a hot mess. Ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me that you're going to have an event planned out, sectioned out just for you. And then somebody else is going to try and come and crash it. And you ain't going to have security on deck. <laughs> I said, I know Bravo. Yes, Bravo. Done called themselves sitting up here and fake fraudulently putting something together. Hoping we would digest it and we would go on with it. But I call it foul. Hell no. You can't give me something worth something. And forget about it. Don't show me nothing. Because that was just a hot mess, y'all. But let's go on. I broke it up into four different parts. And we're going to just go on into the least um, type of episode to the best parts of the episode. So, of course, my least favorite was Marlo event. Um Eva called Cynthia to see checking on her, see what's going on and this, that and third and she goes on and tell um Eva that she's going getting ready to go to Marlo's event and this, that and third. And she said, You ain't going. I thought you were gonna try to go. She like, I ain't stand Marlo. But anyway, Marlo texts me on my private number, okay? And I, you know, I'm like, damn, how she got your private number? Did you give it to her, Eva? Are y'all talking behind the scenes, girl? Y'all just making up stuff just to look good on camera to keep us coming back and forth. Are y'all really friends, girl? <laughs> but anyway, she says Marlo texts her, and now nah, she has no plans on going. She just tired of Marlo ways. Marlo's never gonna change. Just that in third. And then um, Cynthia goes on to tell her that Candy came, you know, around her at some, you know, hardware store that they were meeting up at and this, that, and the third. And Candy dropped down a bomb saying um, Nene had put in her ear that whom they have a mutual friend that's going around recording conversations. And she happened to be recording Cynthia at the time when she was dogging Cynthia out. And, uh, of course, Eva was like, girl, what? Who, who, who recording you, girl? And she's like, I don't know. It could be Marlo. Then it could be Yovana. But I don't know. But if it's Marlo, uh, I might be cool with her now. But if I find out she's been filed behind my back, then I ain't going to be dealing with her no more either. You know, she uh, said they were trying to talk all tough and stuff. I'm like, girl, talk that talk when you're in front of that person you trying to call yourself talking about. Other than that, this little stuff they got showing sidebars and stuff. You talking to other people about people. I have no interest in that, okay? I have no interest in all the huffing and puffing and trying to stand on your own. Mm -mm. Don't get it. Don't got it. And it ain't good, okay? So, Cynthia, she's still on the bench. <laughs> So we move on. We move on. Candy's the first one. Of course, you know, she's all proper and prim when it's about being on time to anything. And I like that. I like that. You can't be on CPT, CPT time all the time. You got to be on Caucasian time. All right. But anyway, going back to the uh, episode, Candy strutted on out there, got to the event. And she said, okay, okay. Hmm. Hmm. You know, her little way. She goes, Okay, I see the wigs. I like and all of them. Yeah, okay, cool. I like the background. Ooh, that's nice. But damn, what are decorations? This ain't one of Marlo Hampton's events. I'm looking for splash, dash, elegant glass, sparkles. You know, <laughs> just an amazing decor of decoration is what she was saying. But that was absent 
of all of that. Okay. That was that aviance that she usually give the ladies when she brings them out to one of her parties or her events. It was lackluster, lackluster. She just gave the basics. Okay. And Candace, okay, mad at her. But damn, this ain't like, this ain't like how Marlo usually get down. But okay, I'm going to sit my behind down somewhere. Okay. <laughs> so she gets on the couch and then somewhere out of nowhere, Yovana shows up and gives her hugs and stuff of that nature. Cynthia shows up with her blonde wig. And I don't know what's wrong with these ladies on this show. All of them ain't blonde now. I mean, did they get tapped? Did they become a part of some sorority they didn't tell us about? Oh, golly. But anyway, um, they come and they congr- um, what do you call it? Um, congregate with one another, have small talk with one another, and then can. I don't know why she's being so abrupt and to the point lately but she just stuck all the conversation because I, I don't know i guess um it just came up in a sense and she just opened the door since um yovana was asking you know was nini coming was um eva coming and this that and third and she and cynthia was like no i talked to kenya she's not coming and Eva, no, she's not coming either. Neither one of them are going to show up. So I do know about those two. But Nene, no, I don't really know about her. And then Candy was like, well, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. But I just want to ask a question. Was you the one going around recording people? <laughs> she asked that uh, uh, Yovana. And Yovana was like, she was just slow with it. You know, instead of her just saying, you know, when you're accused of something or somebody's trying to accuse you of something, you come straight out and say, no, now where'd you get that from? But she said... She didn't say anything at first. She just said, well, who, who, why are you asking me that? Who told you that? And she was like, don't tell me I told me that. I'm just straight up asking you, did you record a conversation? Um, and pretty much setting Cynthia up for something. And she said, no, honey, it wasn't me. But how she was stroking on that long fake hair, I'm like, mm, it may not have been you, but you probably knew who it is or you know who it is, okay? I don't know. It just seems too much. I don't think Yovana is the person. I really don't. I think it's somebody else. It might be Marlo. <laughs> I don't know. But if you try to do the deductive, deductive reasoning on it, I mean, it, who, who could it be? Because it can't be Cynthia telling her own self, you know what I'm saying? Recording her own self. That would be stupid. Um... I don't know. Y'all think about it. I'm not too invested in trying to find out. But it would be nice to know. But anyway, moving on from that situation, um, Marlo finally comes over to the ladies, give them hooks and this, then a third. And then she finally goes and open up her presentation of why they're here. And she wants to go around and showing her stuff. And so she comes out with her two nephews. They're escorting her out to the public or to her people that she invited to her event. And she's, you know, thanking everybody for showing up and coming. And she goes into a little short speech about, you know, you can be uh, whoever you want to be. Whenever you put on one of those wigs, you just become that person. And I do it every day. I wear seven days. It's seven days of the week and I have seven different wigs. And she said, I try them on and I become that person who that wig make, makes me to desire who I want to be that day. And it's fabulous. And you can do it and everybody can do it. You know, if I can do it, everybody can do it in a sense is what she was saying. I'm like, mm-hmm. Okay, well, Marlo, all right. Um, so um then Nene finally shows up and then she goes in to, you know, how how you call it, fashionably late where everybody's there and everybody is looking, I guess, for the queen to walk through the door or whatnot. But um everybody goes in and hugs. She goes in to hug everybody, you know, that fake little hug, like mm, 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 you know that kind of mess. So <laughs> Fake and fraudulent. Fake and fraudulent. But Nene ain't, ain't, she ain't above that. She ain't above that. She like it. But anyway, um, yeah. And Portia, she tries to go and say something to Portia. But Portia act like she looking for somebody. I'm like, Portia, now. They could have kept Portia at home. They could have kept Tanya at home. They could have just showed up at the event already mingling and whatnot. Because it, it was just a hot mess. I'm like... Portia, you can't shade her when y'all ain't even talking. I mean, come on now, girl. Ugh, just the whole how she did, it was just like, it wasn't even called for. They shouldn't even wrote that part in or had her play that part. And the whole scene of her and Portia and Shamia and Tanya riding to the event trying to talk about Nene, you know, whatever. They could have kept that too because I didn't find any uh, interesting points out of that whole conversation or that ride to Marlo's event. Let's see here. 
Mm. Oh, and so basically Marlo is asking the women to go on, congregate together, go, you know, try on some of the wigs. And she wants to play a little game with them. And she's trying to pair them up into partners. And she already see what Portia's doing. So she's like, okay, I'm going to fix your behind. So she pairs Portia and Nene up. So they're going to have to be face to face and talk or whatever. But as soon as, you know, Portia, you know, acting all stupid and stuff. And Nene just looking at her, but I ain't paying her no mind. I ain't paying her no mind. Uh, Kenya walks in the door. I like, oh Lord, with a oh, I want to say a one piece band, but I think it was like maybe four or five people, you know, playing like a marching band, but on a very low key scale, and they crash in Marlo's event, and Kenya got all this. Uh, paraphernalia her business stuff uh little giveaway bags and samples of uh straightener edges or gel for the edges or i don't know what she was doing but it was just just ooh piss poor tasteless and see this is what i'm saying team toil uh the ones out there that be talking about kenya's class that she do all this what I can't have to show her ass. That was not necessary. And I think production had a big piece in it too. Because like I said. And Candy had did express to us. It was kind of lackluster. And you know with the decorations and all of that. And we just didn't understand what was going on. And why Candy had to show up and show out like that. That was just piss poor. And just total degradement of how I even see her even more I mean she was like at a seven trying to make it to that eight but now she back at negative one with that little shenanigan uh fat <coughs> facade that she set up there and did that was just mm, y'all try to put her at this you know business woman you know I'm like damn and if, if y'all want to say oh no she was just bringing the drama she was just spicing ah, uh -uh. we didn't need that kind of drama we need that kind. That's not the kind that I search for. That's not the mindless entertainment that gets me to come and do reports and, and reviews on it. That's just piss poor of an adult. You know, what if Marlo came and interrupted her, you know, event like this? She'll be like, uh-uh, security, security, get her. And then they did show playbacks of someone Kenya didn't want at her event or whatnot. Because I think she threw Porsche out of her event one time. A housewoman thing and her and Porsche weren't getting together or whatever. And she said, oh, I think. Thank you for coming, but you got to leave. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. And then you're going to sit up here and do something like that to Marlo's event. But like I said, I think it had production all the way on it. They thought it would be a good um, piece of drama. But no, it was like an elf bomb. It bombed real bad in my eyes. I didn't appreciate it, didn't want it. And I wish you wouldn't have shown it to me because it was just in poor taste. Okay, we just don't upset somebody else trying to do something, trying to be an entrepreneur and show their products and then you got somebody disgusting as Kenya and her demeanor well I ain't gonna say I'm just gonna say her demeanor because she's not a disgusting person but just her outlook and what she brought you know her demeanor her character all of it was just tasteful and degrading in my book and you know I'm being serious about this so I don't know about it in my comments I'm like eh, that, no it ain't you just a hater yeah I'm sure hating on Kenya today and I'm gonna tell you yes I am because that was just something that you don't do to anybody not even your worst enemy if they gonna fail it's gonna be because they failed on their own and then you can go and say oh I told you so you ain't listen to me but when you sabotage somebody's stuff like that that's another whole way of you know getting under my skin i'm like play fast sometimes damn you ain't got to be going up doing all this stuff because sometimes women don't want to uh show their real hair half of them probably missing their hair due to illnesses uh diseases that they have or whatnot um you know hair loss issues and shit. sometimes they just don't want to do nothing to their hair so wigs do come in handy okay i suggest every female have one in the closet <laughs> okay just to even just to take some wear and tear off of messing with your hair every day give it a break okay but just can you just sitting up there doing that and the producers just sitting up there letting it happen hell no nah, that wouldn't have flew that wouldn't have flew in the real world you come messing up somebody event security would have pretty much stopped you took all your little toys or um what do you call it uh what we call it? promotional items they would just 
took you in those things on out the door, okay? And wouldn't have let you back in for nothing and no one. And probably, have, I don't know if you can make a police complaint against it or not. I don't know. But anyway, uh, that was just poor taste. Poor, 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 poor taste. And Bravo selection of giving us that as drama as well as Kenya showing up doing that, okay? But, uh, yeah. But, you know, Marlo was, you know, very well... Uh, not appreciative of what I'm going to say because it's just a boring episode. She was, um, she didn't want to like seem like she wasn't, oh damn, because it just, it just upset me. In other words, for better word to think of, Marla was rolling with the punches. She wasn't trying to be all extra like Kenya was and, you know, making herself look a little bit deterred or uh, perturbed about the whole situation. And she was like, okay, I'm going to make this lemon out of lemonade. So we finna quickly count this shit. So she told her guests to don't pay no attention to Kenya. They came here to see her, just support her, come on over to the other side. Because security finna get ready to get her on out of here, all her and her band mates or whatever and you know nini was going around chuckling and said oh oh marlo don't got security she had sat down and everything like she finna get her front row seat or what was finna go down and then you know she was telling kenya look your last time you can either come over here at right play the games and get into my event or you're gonna have to leave baby you're gonna have to leave so can you be like i ain't coming over there playing no game yeah you ain't got nothing for me i'm like damn how you gonna come up here you ain't even um have no money invested in renting this event hall it's not about you and your products it's about her and marlo's her wig line and you uh but anyway security finally got their behinds where they needed to be and um they were pretty much asking her to leave meaning kenya more okay so then after nini saw it wasn't really gonna be no biggie thing they weren't gonna put hands on each other or you know something be throwing bottles or um promotional ideas and um items in the air or whatnot nini slid herself on out that door said i ain't here for all this <laughs> I hear her. I'm like, Nene, damn, sit your ass down sometime. Sit and just watch the parade go past you and enjoy it for a time or for a spell. You know, sit, cock a squat and sit down sometime. Don't run. Just let all of the discord and chaos just go past you. And you just looking and evaluating like, well, damn, I'm glad I'm not in this. But I sit on show, get my popcorn. Garcon, could you bring me something to drink? Something to eat, too, if you can find it. And I'd be like sitting there like, mm. Mm, what you gonna do, girl? What you gonna go on handle your bed, huh? Go on handle Marlo, cause I told you she's a sight for oh, she ain't a sight for sore eyes. You just have to make sure she's not on the guest list. If she comes to the door, make sure they turn her away. She's her party or one, two, three, her whatever she wanna bring. They're not welcome, and it should handle that way, you know. But I've just been sitting there waiting for somebody to come ask me some. Do I need to help them handle the situation or whatnot? I've just been sitting there looking pretty. Sitting there looking pretty. Well, honey, um, like that's why I took any player card. Well, not player card, but her uh, OG card, thinking she's the queen of um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because, again, she showed me she ain't ready. She ain't ready for the title. Because ain't no queen going to leave no situation. <laughs> Not when she was asked to come to show up and be fabulous. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. So, um, yeah, Nene ran on out the door, scurried on out the door, however you want to see it, shimmied on out the door or whatever. But uh, then you, she get in the car and Yavana is, I don't know what's wrong with these women on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Damn it, they don't want to be there. They don't want to be there, okay? Period, point blank, let them go. But I guess uh, Yavana wanted to get her showtime on, so she ran out the Nene and Nene I almost did the same thing Kenya did to Portia when they were eating at some restaurant uh, at an event out of town. And Cynthia was trying to talk to Portia. And, I mean, no, Cynthia was trying to talk to Kenya. Kenya was rolling up the window on her. And like she didn't even see it like she wasn't there. But that's who she called her friend. I wonder if she remember that incident. But Nene was doing the same thing to Yovana. She didn't want to hear it. She talking about, that's not my event. 
That's not how I get down. You know, just being extra. Nene, we down. We know it wasn't your event. All thing we asked you to do was come. Wasn't nobody looking for you. Wasn't nobody checking you. Wasn't nobody trying to say anything mean to you. You was non-existent. And they asked because they were going and going back and forth with themselves. Okay? But uh -huh, and I'm like, Yvonne, you better move from them tires. Because <laughs> she finna get ready. Roll on. Roll on. Roll on, Yvonne. Roll on. And honey, if you are the one that was the bone carrier, the recorder of the conversation you was having with Cynthia, if you are the one, don't you feel a little bit stupid? Girl, I, I, if I was that one, I would destroy that tape. It would not be, it would be non-existent. When it came around for me to play that part, I'm like, Nene. I was just lying to you, babe. I ain't had net. <laughs> now, see, that's what I would do. I would, I would show her up, and I would show out. Okay, I was like, I ain't had nothing on Cynthia. I just wanted to see what you were gonna say about her. I would play it just like that. But anyway, and probably would have sold it to the highest bidder if they really wanted to know. But nah, I wouldn't did anything. Since she acted that way, I would have acted that way on her as well and bounced. But like I said, she went out there trying to hold Nene up from going and whatnot. And that just wasn't even her place. So it just is what it is. Um, let me see. But then Candy, she she stood up and showed out. I like okay now. Candy trying to call somebody a spade, and she really ain't holding her tongue this time. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, because at first I thought she was Kenya puppet, but you showing me you, you you can step out of her limelight for a change and insert yourself back in the um role of things of who you are and how you get down. She did tell Kenya, well, Kenya, damn, you told me you weren't coming. And Cynthia should have been right on her, too. This is the second time. Kenya, first time, she went and told Portia something. She had no business telling. You know, they told her, don't say nothing. Because you one day, you don't know nothing anyway. It was just me, Cynthia, and Eva. But what you do, you went over to try and tell Portia about Eva was shading her. And all this, that, and the third. And saying something about negative energy. And then it came out to be Cynthia was the one that said something about the negative energy. When they rolled the footage back. Check it out, baby. But, um... Again, you got, um, what I was saying, I lost my train of thought. Man. Oh, yeah, you got Candy cussing out, um, Kenya saying, you said you weren't coming. And she said, like, oh, yeah, I know I said I wasn't coming, but baby Brooklyn was, she wasn't feeling well. But then, you know, she started feeling well. And, and Candy just shut her shit down. She didn't want to hear no more because she knew that was a bunch of bullshit. She had said, no, nah, baby, because how you going to get a one-man band or a five-member band come up in here? Where'd you have that on the side? Where'd you pull that out at the last moment? Come on, girl. No, you had that shit playing. I don't told you about stuff. And shit. But I'm like, can that strike two? Are you gonna let her get the strike three? Cause we ain't gonna even include Cynthia in the in the conversation. Cause she ain't gonna do that anyway. King, I mean, King would lie to Cynthia up and down, down and back up, and King, and, and Cynthia would still know how to deal with uh, Kenya because she wants to be somebody's uh, friend and want to be on somebody's team that she think winning. But I thank you, Ken. I really do thank you for getting that shit shut down. Okay. Um, moving on to let's see number two. Okay, we're gonna go on to number two. That's whole number one I wrote, and then we got Candy and Nene. They have lunch together. Okay, Nene calls Candy when she's out. Uh, well, she's not out. She's in the house actually spending some alone, quiet time with her husband Todd. We damn sure gonna get in that situation because I thought more of Candy once again, but she's letting me down. She let me down as a stepmom and a mom, period. She just let me down. But anyway, that's another uh, ending of our um, review for this uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. But anyway, Nene goes and calls Ken I mean, uh, Candy and tells her, you know, let's have lunch. Let's catch up with one another. I, you know, I kind of miss you. Let's let's do this. Let's make it happen. <laughs> So they set up a lunch date and um Nene goes to I don't forgot the little restaurant they were meeting at. But anyway, uh, she goes there, gets there first, set the table, get the table. Talking about she don't want to have her back to the door in case somebody wanna shoot or something like that. I'm like, girl, please, what about that window behind you? They can come in the front, back, and the sides and get you if they want you, Nene. 
Crying never stops for no one. And sometimes they don't even think about what they're doing. They just do it, boo. But anyway, that's our claim to fame. So Candy finally shows up. Just running a little late. Or maybe our uh, needing was a little early. Because Candy used to be on uh, Caucasian time. <laughs> she don't be running behind that much. But anyway, maybe she could have been running behind. You know, got a little traffic in her way or whatnot. But she gets down there, sit and talk. And Nene goes in to talk about, you know, her a little bit. Trying to catch her up on her whereabouts, her comes and goes. She talks about Greg. Greg's in remission and everything's doing real fine about that. And then she goes in to talk about the ladies a little bit. And what she's been hearing about all the babies, all the births and stuff like that. And can't say, oh, let me let, stop that. Let me tell you about my thing. Let me, let me, let, let me tell you about my baby. I got a baby girl, too. I got a baby. And then he was like, ooh, child, you got a baby, too. Okay, and it's a girl. <laughs> I like Nene. You're doing the most, baby. You're doing the most, cause you ain't you ain't really saying you like that person. <laughs> but I'm gonna let you go and do what you gotta do, Nene. Play your role, baby. Maybe you're still taking some acting classes. I don't know. Okay, but anyway, it works for you. It works for me. So she goes down and says, "Well, ooh, congratulations. I'm so glad for you. I'm so happy for you." Um, then somehow they start talking about Porsche and Dennis and being in the um, what do you call it? social media and all of these you know he's fooling around on her and the girl came out and you know the media was saying who they felt it was and this that and the third and she said what about this bestiality thing what i mean what is that all about like nene trying to play stupid i'm like you had somebody in your camp to tell you what bestiality is okay and she was like, is it something like he, he like playing with animals or he just like looking at animals do it? What What, what is it? I like, Nene, stop it. So Candy was like, I don't know, child. You know, playing stupid. But I, I would have said, Nene, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, let's talk about something else. And see, that's what the OG would have said. But she went on and said, well, okay. Well, let me just tell you this. Well, if he is messing with animals, I mean, she, she better get her rabies shot. <laughs> That sounds like she need to take in the pet smart, don't it? I'm like, nay, nay, girl, okay. But she had to get her two cents in. She had to fire her two bullets. Okay, they blanks, but it went off with a laugh because, you know, crack canned up and it kind of took her, took her to the side to like, damn, I'm good, you know, kind of situation. So then she leaves that situation. They start talking about Cynthia and how Cynthia has been all crazy in the media lately. And talking about her real bad. And this was her good friend. And she going around saying this, that, and the third. You know, and we already know Nene has said she did seven interviews to Nene's one. But I'm like, Nene, Nene, and then Candace said, well, hell, you the one we calling her weak. You were calling her uh, some more degradating type things and, and destroying her character. Both of y'all were doing it to each other. But, hey, it just is what it is. So, like, okay. Candy, you know, call them a spade a spade. That's good. I always serve that up when you have to. It, it, it makes good conversation and let a person know that they can't get shit off on you now. You stand, you stand with the facts. You stand with the facts. So she knew she wasn't going to get nowhere with um, her talking about Cynthia with her. So she was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, what else is going on? What else new? And she said, well, honey, I've been trying to tell y'all Cynthia and all what y'all think y'all are, but y'all going to soon find out. <coughs> And she said, probably sooner than later, because we have a mutual friend. And that friend told me that they got receipts. Hell no, they got a recording of Cynthia talking about me real bad. And hopefully it would come to fruition. And then y'all can see that I ain't been lying to you all about how Cynthia get down and how she can be evil and talk behind your back and want to, you know, root for your downfall and all this kind of stuff and i'm like damn needy could you have come back with something else other than that because i was shocked myself i was like this is some foolish fuckery stuff you got going on out your mind who gives a crap if cynthia is talking about you among the women who cares you don't hang around with them anyway that's not og mentality we don't get down with that now if you want to have a conversation to say why did cynthia go and have all these conversations about me and can you set up a meeting so me and her can talk because I don't feel like calling her, but I, I want to use you as a mediator. Is that fine? I said, that's what the OG would have did. If you can't go through the person, 
If you can't go straight to the person, go through a mediator where y'all are mutual friends with somebody or y'all uh, like somebody, may not be your friend, but they accept you or they are cordial with you. You could just set up a meeting. You just can't as a mediator, okay? Set up a decent place for y'all uh, both feel comfortable in and then go let have. You know what I'm saying? That's what you could have did. You ain't got to be sitting up down trying to tell Candace some tea that she already know in the rest of the world. Damn. But anyway, that's why I took your call up. Mm -mm. Not OG, not OG material, not yet. But anyway, we're going to move on from that situation. Um, Because it wasn't really nothing to tell. But she knew she had pretty much said, okay, if I give Candace this information, I know it's going to hit back uh, where I need it to hit. Like, you know, target, you know, designated. And I f fired my shot. And so... That's where it's going to hit because I know Candy going to take it back. And she's going to solidify everything I said word for word. She ain't going to add or embellish. She's going to give it to the ladies word for word. And she's hoping Kenya is in attendance too. And which it all played out. It, it went that way because Candy set it. Well, I ain't going to say Candy set up. It was a meeting Cynthia set up of two friends getting together with her to help her try to re renovate her room. That she's trying to make room for, um, what's his name? Mike Hill. I'm like, damn, Cynthia, you ain't got no money, girl. Out of all of your businesses, you ain't got no money to hire somebody to come and put you an added space, a room, closet, or whatever. And why the hell you buy that expensive-ass house and they ain't got no more rooms? It just looked like they just got two rooms is what you're trying to tell me. One for Noel and one for yourself. That big-ass house with a lake. Girl, anyway, we're going to move on from that one because it, it didn't make no sense. But like I said, uh, she invited uh, Kenya and Candy uh, to come and help her renovate like they really going to do something. You really think Kenya going to get down and do something, girl, please. But anyway, they call, it's called a fake fraudulent scene and they had meeting at a hardware store and, you know, Candy finally comes after Kenya gets there as well and she goes in and say girl I met with Nene we had lunch we talked about this we talked about that and girl we talked about you okay she didn't like that you going around him saying this that and the third and she said y'all have a mutual friend didn't tell me what friend I didn't ask because I was trying to shut shit down I didn't want to be involved with it but hey I'm gonna be the bone collector and tell you she said that y'all have a mutual friend and that mutual friend that you all share recorded a conversation that uh you know recorded you uh, having a conversation and talking about Nene like a dog like you had told her up from the flow up okay girl that's all I got that's all I'm got good you know then King gonna try to you know get her little two cents in some you didn't find out who it was well we need to find out who this was this snake need to be revealed I said well you calling the snake a snake you gonna be revealed you gonna tell your faults you gonna tell us you sorry for acting like a damn fool sometimes are you gonna do that can you okay well slide yourself back sit yourself down okay because you can't seem to get it together either. You want to talk shit. And then when somebody catch you in your shit. Then you want to bring up everybody else's shit. And stuff the shit they trying to get you to come uh, come out clean about. Okay. We don't seen that happen. We saw that shit happen last uh, episode. Okay. How you was trying to get on Eva. And get Eva straightened out about your bad energy. And this that and that. And third. And then you try to. They find out that Cynthia was the one that told it. But then you going to bring up something that Cynthia and Eva had. Uh, got going on that had nothing to do with you but yet now you want to jump in some again that ain't got shit to do with you but you want to make it about you damn see that's what i'm talking about can you get on my goddamn nerves about that, that kind of stuff stay in your own lane when somebody come for you then twirl them on out get bring out the tornado in you and, and tam them up okay but when it comes to somebody else that you treat like shit oh I, or get, unless you just saying well i treat her like shit i ain't gonna let nobody else treat her like shit is that how i go can you because we know how you get down with cynthia you talk to her like gum gum on the shoe on somebody dirty flow that you don't picked up that's how you treat cynthia that's how you treat a girl. And I'm sure they got playbacks uh, on playbacks. Okay. At least Nene didn't. Did she ever cut Cynthia off? Hmm. She ever let Cynthia share her own opinions? 
Well, I think she did. She just let, like, Cynthia taking care of her, you know, and, and cooing her and, and comforting her. But she did let Cynthia speak her mind, but she didn't really have too much pay attention to her. But Kenya's another whole entity. She just shut her down, make her look stupid and all that. And then going to try to come back like she ain't said or did nothing. I'm like, when are you going to wake up, Cynthia, and know who is your friend who's not your friend? Who will not be so degrading to you and who uh, won't? Will be degrading to you. Will and won't be. Okay, that's what you need to find out. Because it seems like Candy is really there for you. Because she did try to take up for you in Nene's face. But you will pick Kenya over Candy any day. That's what it's showing and seeing to me. But you know, while you popping off at Candy trying to play this, that, and the, the role. Talking about, oh yeah, I was a Michelle Obama to Nene until she went, until I went left. And then I started looking like you know nobody to her so i like cynthia i need you to pretty much do this antics and all this stuff with nene okay i don't need you to do it with candy because candy is just was the bone collector that's all the care the message to you you do however you feel what you need to do with it but she was out of it okay so then that whole situation you know like i said she called herself saying something there wasn't nobody too much paying attention to her to her about her situation they moved on but let's go on and get and talk about this i give myself five minutes because i'm already 35 minutes in longer than i wanted to anticipate it but you know like i said that marlo thing and kenya and disrupting stuff and then i kind of went a little bit too long on my sidebars but let's get into this candy and todd and kayla situation because that it kind of broke my heart it really did and candy i'm gonna call file on you because ain't no way in the world you can have a daughter that you treat like gold and then you marry a man that has a child and you pretty much treat her like shit or you allow to be in the middle and not cuss Todd ass out and say, well, you know what? I married you for good and worse, and I knew you had a daughter. Well, that daughter's like my daughter, too. And if I want to give what I want to give her, I'm going to give it to her because I married you. I married into your already made family, and I chose to say she was my daughter, okay? She may be stepped in some people people's eyes, but she is my daughter. And whatever I want to do for her, damn, I'm going to do for her. Forget what you talking about. Or then we might have to re reevaluate the prenup that we signed. Okay. And better yet. Let me give you one further. I would have went and talked to Kayla's mom. I would say give me your mama number. Let me see how far she wants me to go in giving you money. That I feel that you deserve. That I want to give you. Because you are my stepdaughter. And we're going to have this conversation between me and your mama. And then whatever we work out uh as a amicable situation where i'm not spoiling you that much but since i have i want to share i want to give because i treat my own daughter that way and i don't want to have no animosity and i said and that's the stance you should have took candy but you try to hide behind the reasons why you don't do it and the shit ain't adding up okay don't be sitting here telling us where well, that's touch child because are you in a situation where you telling me Todd makes decisions for Kayla and you make the decisions for Riley and that's how it goes and that's how it's going to be because then that is some bullshit. Okay, I don't know what you got yourself into, my girl, but that is some bullshit. All right, you shouldn't even got married. You shouldn't even took on this responsibility as a stepmom if you wasn't going to play the role. Okay, yes, she has a dad in her life. Yes, she has a biological mom, but if anything happened to that biological mom, Anything happen to Todd, what's going to happen to Kayla? Who's going to be her rock? Who's going to be her foundation? Huh? Okay. Yeah. You were saying when you were trying to be engaged with the man, that's going to be your daughter. That's how you're going to see it. But you keep hiding and, and putting it off on Todd, saying, well, that's Todd's daughter. Okay. Y'all have two children together. Now you have baby Ace and you have baby Blaze. And I heard you when you said that if he thinks he's going to meeting Todd, run the situation that he's running with Kayla, he got another thing coming. Well, baby girl, take that same energy. Put it back to him saying, no, I make this money. You didn't. Right, Riley? <laughs> we out of here. Come on, Kayla, baby. And that's where it would have been. But see, now you trying to take Kayla's room from her. Okay? 
And Kayla said she can't talk to her dad. She can't talk to her dad like she talked to you. So that's why she come to you. So she's putting that much emphasis on you as her stepmom. And she's feeling very positive that you can help her work the situation out with her dad. Why aren't you doing that, Candy? Why aren't you doing it? Because I know can, uh, uh, Todd ain't got no hold on you. He ain't got no hold on you. Okay? He ain't got a hold on you, girl. Because you let it be known, you're going to prenup or we ain't going to walk. Prenup or we ain't going to walk. And he signed that prenup, didn't he? So you need to put it back to him. Either you going to let me take care of Kayla the way I want to take care of her. Or you ain't getting no more money. And I'm telling you, once he figure out what's being done to him and his finances, he'll straighten up. And he ain't even got to see the money. It ain't none of his business, okay? Now, if she want to tell her mama, fine. But that's your money. You made that money. He didn't. So he shouldn't even be in the situation. But let's go on and get into it. Kayla came in the room. Todd was sitting there having a nice conversation with Candy. You know, whatever. They were playing a little okay, connect the dots or connect four or something like that. It was like tic-tac-toe or something like that. But I ain't never seen that version. It was clear. It was black and clear. I'm like, mm, okay. But I ain't been in a toy store lately either. But it might be something that they're selling, you know, in a fancy store or whatnot. But that's neither here nor there. But Kayla comes in and she's speaking to both Todd and Candy. And, you know, they're saying, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Um, she's telling Candy and Todd about how she's feeling about how Todd is treating her and Todd like, you know, what's what you talking about? What's going on? She said, well, hey, when we get to fussing or whatever, we don't agree with each other. You don't even talk to me for a whole month. A whole month. We talking about no texts, no Skyping, no emails. What the hell are you doing over there, Todd? You say you're a good dad. We say, we see what you do on daddy daycare. But Ace is kind of small at the time. Okay. You're going to treat your men different than you treat your women. When you're raising them talk. Hmm. I don't understand. Then she talking about, well, mama, me and her biological mom, she calls me all the time when I'm away from her. I'm guessing she's thinking when she's over there with Todd hanging out with Candy them when she's in town or whatever. Mama still calls me morning, noon, night, all days during the week, you know. But you, 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 it's like non-existent, dad, non-existent. You call when you want to. You, you come when you see me when you want to. You ask me to come down when you want to. It's like you ain't making me a part of this family and I'm feeling some kind of way about it. And, you know, Cam's in the background say, yeah, you right. You right. Yeah, I've been trying to talk with him about it. I'm like, you ain't trying hard enough, Candy. You ain't trying hard enough. You know, if you got to make your move first and then he just catch up with it. But, I mean, what is it? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I mean, I, that's the rule y'all have. I raise Riley, you raise Kayla, and that's just where it go. Because that's not right. Because Kayla may be the one that come out and do something. The ones we put our more uh, efforts in and try to make them seem like they're going to do all this and that. Because we set forth a good path for them to follow. They might not end up turning out doing shit. And the one that you didn't pay attention to, they're going to be the ones that grow up and do something. Probably try to help you behind when you get old. Depending on if Todd don't spend your money. And if he spend your money, <laughs> you know, it just is what it is. Because you didn't listen to Riley. You didn't listen to Mama Joyce. And you probably didn't listen to your gut instinct. It was just you wanting a man at the time. You thought you could get him. You got him. You paid for him. And it's just is what it is. But I'm like, damn, Candy. The girl is coming to you. You're older. You're supposed to be her stepmom. But yet you're not listening. You're not listening. Are you listening? But you're scared to overtake what what Todd says. But then, okay, where's where's your right in that relationship towards um, doing something for your stepdaughter? Where's that right? Did it go out the window, or is it truly is a thing where you don't allow him to say anything when it comes to Riley? So he don't allow you to say anything when it comes to Kayla. Uh, am I hitting it home? Well, Y'all need to go to counseling. Counseling will break up. Because y'all gonna have this girl over here that's working hard, doing hard, don't seem like she's ever been in any type of trouble with the law or just trouble for you or her biological mom. And y'all ain't doing that for her. She is gonna feel some kind of way. And then we ain't gonna see her at all. We ain't gonna see her at all. Because she gonna make a way to get away from you. And that's just gonna be it. But then, uh, you know, she... 
and like I said, she tells uh, Todd that he's emotionless towards her. And I can see that. I definitely can because after she had this warm felt emotions released to both Candy and Todd, you thought Todd ran over there and gave her a hug, kissed on the fo uh, forehead, hugged the rear like a bear hug or whatever. He don't tell me, okay, I understand. I'm going to try to do better. No, you ain't. You're going to hit them clubs. what you're going to do and continue to do what you've always done and just be about you all day, every day. And Candy stood up and had another child with you, girl. Where is Mama Joyce? We need her to come to the forefront and talk to Todd. Yes. But she ain't got nothing to talk to Todd about because, you know, Kay and I pretty much got a prenup going on. And Ace and Riley's going to be taken care of. And it's sad that she won't step up her step-grandmama duties and tell her, look, I made... Kanda promised that I was going to be nice to you and to Kayla. And Kayla is my step grandchild. But it seems like Mama Joyce don't want to get in it either. And that's sad. That is so sad. Hmm. But anyway, um, yeah. And Todd excuses out to Kayla. Well, no, he pretty much tells Kayla too. He's trying to make her stronger. He's trying to make her tough. He's trying to make her independent. Uh, he don't want nobody to take advantage of her. He wants her to know what it is to work for it yourself and then and, and get what you need by yourself I'm like damn Todd don't you look at Ken Ken ain't trying to let Riley do none of that hey Riley don't even know what working is about she ain't working at no McDonald's no Kroger no shopping center mall uh-uh she ain't did none of that so why can't she partake in the same type of lifestyle that Riley got if Ken is willing to do it no, your ego don't got involved, and you feel like mm -mm, my child ain't gonna be sp small, uh, spoiled. My child ain't gonna be doing this, that, and the third, whatever. And I'm like, Candy, okay, who you don't marry, girl? Who have you married? Anyway, and then um, Candy does express that if Todd don't have an issue or how he's raising Kayla or what he feels like he's doing for Kayla, nobody else should have an issue. And I guess he probably told her too, step off. <laughs> step off my parenting skills with my child. And let me emphasize that again, my child, not your child, my child, okay? But like I said, I think Canada made this hole and dug it for herself because she probably was getting on top when they first got together when um, Riley was younger. And she he was probably trying to instill some of his rules and regulations on Candy's daughter. And Candy didn't like it because she already had her set of rules up in the house that, you know, he just needed to bend to them and just don't even be bothered. Just be a father figure to her when necessary. But other than that, she got that. So it may be a turn of events where he's putting it back on her because he tried to step in and try to tell Candy, like, let's let these children just how they got it. You got it. They ain't got it. You got it. And as long as you give them fundamental things that they're going to need and expose them to certain, you know, aspects of life so it won't be so hard for them. You know, let them do for themselves. You know, that instead of her going to these different uh, colleges and experiencing these things and that, there, let the girl get a job just to see what it's like for a month, if not, you know, or the summer. Let her do, let her do blue collar work, low class type work, and then we're going to show her if you don't like those two stages, poverty and then somewhat middle class then you need to really step your game up to be on this high level type of living that we doing because unless you're gonna make a fool out yourself and get on one of these reality shows or you're gonna be boss and get into them books and get you a free scholarship you know straight from you know whenever you start high school up to college finishing college you got to make a's and b's baby we prefer a's but if you give me a's and b's okay if you give me b's okay but we don't need you to drop down because then you know hope ain't gonna help you <laughs> meaning the whole scholarship so we need you to get a free ride okay like the rest of them out there doing <sighs> oh anyway but that's all i got y'all i'm just i wish i would spend more time talking about uh todd but um uh, you know, I had to get on Kenya behind too and how she was acting and, you know, disturbing somebody, interrupting the event. But yeah, it was okay, y'all. It was okay. But it was really, I, I was just heartfelt. I was just really kind of upset that it happened the way it happened with poor Kayla. Okay, poor Kayla. Let's all pray for Kayla.
let's just all pray for her when we lay down tonight. Let's pray for Kay because she needs prayer, honey. Because I don't know what's going on in the house that Burr's Tucker residence over there. Because she said her mama's solid. She knows she loved by her mama, but when it comes to candy and Todd, she don't know. She don't know. She don't know. That's a cry for help, people. Cry for help. But let's all pray for Kayla tonight when we lay our heads down, honey. All right, unless she's a good-ass actress, okay? But I don't think kids know how to be real manipulative at that age. Or yeah, I don't think so. Maybe they can be. But I don't like looking at kids that way unless they show a pattern in their earlier formative years. But anyway, y'all be blessed. I will see y'all next video. And I'm out.